Hi, I'm Miranda Wright, and this is day 115 of our 120-day Upper Room Prayer Campaign. And today we're going to pray prayers of deliverance. Deliverance is not something that many believers talk much about. Though we all read in scripture all the times that Jesus and the disciples and the apostles of the early church cast evil spirits out. But we're going to talk about it today because it's very needed. And when you begin to understand the power and the authority of the kingdom of God that Jesus makes available to those who believe in him, then you will begin to walk in overcoming power and help others be set free and have a testimony that brings validity to the blood of Jesus in the hearts and minds of others. Because you see, when Jesus wanted to take territory, when he went out into the land of the Gadarenes, the first thing that God caused him to do was to encounter a demoniac. He cast the demons out of that demoniac. It was somebody that everybody knew the enemy had a grip on, had a hold on. And when the son set him free and he was completely changed, everybody could see it and the testimony of it began to stir faith in some and envy in others. But the man, he wanted to go with Jesus. He was so thankful that he had been set free from these demons. He said, Lord, please let me go with you. He wanted to be a disciple, but Jesus said, no, stay here and tell everyone what the Lord has done. You see, it was in the man's deliverance, in the overcoming power of the name of Jesus Christ, that he had been changed and others could see it, that their faith might be stirred to believe and be able to be set free themselves. So God took the territory, he took the man, but then he left the man in the territory to expand the territory. And so this is a very important aspect. In fact, over 70% of Jesus's earthly ministry was spent casting out evil spirits. Many of his healings were done by way of casting out these demons. Not all, of course, we understand that Jesus said that the blind man had committed no sin, but that his ailment was for the glory of God so that it could validate the message that Jesus was bringing so that we understand that not every illness is caused by possession, however much of it is. So I want to begin this lesson because today I'm going to lead you in prayers of deliverance, but I'm also going to teach you in how to perform deliverance because people need to see the overcoming power of the kingdom setting men free. Once again, this ability was afforded us by the blood of Jesus. He paid far too high a price for us to neglect to walk in it. And I want to start this by expressing that there is no shame in needing deliverance and in actuality every person who has been saved has had a deliverance experience because the bible makes it very clear when it says that we are either children of god or children of the devil in fact the whole purpose and process of dying to self and being buried with christ is that we are doing what jesus did on the cross we are giving up the ghost so that we can receive a new spirit be filled with the Holy Spirit, we're pulling out the old root and putting a new root so that that new root can produce the good fruit. This is why Jesus said that only the fruits of the Spirit are evidence that you have the Holy Spirit, the new root. Now we understand that some people's deliverances are more dramatic than others. A lot of that depends on the level of claim that the enemy has on them because of connections to things like the occult or generational curses. But I tell you today that there is no claim greater than the claim of Jesus. It's a legal issue. So today we're going to break the enemy's claim on you and your family and show you how to break it off of others. I had spent two weeks one time teaching a series of lessons on casting out demons. And at the end of the lesson, I told the class, I said, okay, now I've told you everything that I know. Now, my advice to you. Don't worry about anything that I know because authority comes from faith and not from a formula. So I'm going to tell you some things today, but the most important thing that you can walk away with is faith in the delivering power of the name 
of Jesus Christ. If he truly is who we claim to believe that he is, then what can stand against him? And if we truly are born again, blood bought sons and daughters of the living God, joint heirs with Christ, walking in the power of sonship and kingship in the greatest kingdom in existence, then the enemy must obey what God commissions us to say. And he must submit to the name. If you truly have faith in that, then demons will flee when you demonstrate it. Because to me, one of the most astonishing thing about the casting out of demons is that it was not seen prior to Christ. We can read throughout the entire Old Testament and we see all manner of miracles, even the raising of the dead. But the one thing we really do not see are people being set free from the power of the enemy. In fact, when Jesus sent the 70 out, they went out and they came back astonished. It says they were amazed and they were so excited saying, Jesus, even the demons are a subject unto us in your name, in your name. Remember that it's all about the name. This was something they had not really experienced prior to this and God was allowing them to see it for a reason. Because you see, when the Pharisees began to get envious because that the kingdom was being demonstrated through these uncredentialed, unlikely, unauthorized nobodies, they came and they said, oh, well, he's just casting out demons in the, by the power of Beelzebub. Jesus replied, a house divided against itself cannot stand. And if I cast out demons in the name of Beelzebub, then surely the kingdom of hell is fighting against itself. They were accusing Jesus of being demonic because that he was setting people free, bringing them liberty and demonstrating authority over all the power of the enemy. But yet those without this authority, because that they were not serving the king, though they were pretending to be, they were the Pharisees. They began to move in envy because that they didn't have this authority. And Jesus says in Matthew 12, verse 28, this very astonishing thing. He says, but if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. In other words, the casting out of demons is proof that the kingdom of God is here. Now, it's actually evident of a more powerful kingdom disposing the powers and authorities of a lesser kingdom. It's proof of authority. It's proof of Jesus's kingship. And this is why it can only be done in the name of Jesus. So while I don't want you to get caught up in a formula, I want you to have faith faith in who God is, that Jesus is the one who frees us and that by his name, everything that was created must come into submission and that he has come to set men free, to bring liberty to the captive, sight to the blind, to preach the good news to the poor, that God is able to use the least of these to set us free and to give us this great authority against all the works of the enemy. This is the faith that brings authority and demonstrates the overcoming power of the greater kingdom, the kingdom of God against the lesser kingdom of the enemy, the oppressor, the occupier, the usurper is served notice when the real king steps in. But having said that, there are a few things laid out in scripture that I want to bring your attention to today so that we can be as effective as possible in this fight of faith. The first thing we have to discuss is is that anyone who is truly seeking deliverance or wanting to be used to minister deliverance, they have to be. This is not an option. They have to be, first and foremost, repented, blood-bought, born-again, Holy Spirit-filled, children of the Most High God, walking in overcoming power themselves. In other words, they have to be men and women of faith. They have to believe in the power and authority of the name of Jesus Christ to set them free from all of the works of the enemy before they can have faith to speak it over somebody else. And besides that, 
any person who is trying to minister deliverance with unrepented sin in their own life is defenseless against those demons when they begin to take flight. Because the sin in their own life is like a breach. It's a weak point in their wall. In fact, Proverbs 25, 28 says, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. In other words, it's defenseless against the invasion of the enemy. So the first thing we have to do to either be delivered or to be used in deliverance is to come to God with humble, honest repentance. That means we have to acknowledge our sins as sin. We have to confess it with our mouth that we have sinned and admit the things that we know about as sin, repent of them, which means turn away from them. We have to believe in the name of Jesus Christ, which means he will save his people from their sins. If we believe in him, that he is able to overcome this enemy, that he can save us from our sins, then the faith in that will cause us to move in the authority authority of it to not only have that overcoming power in our life, but to cast the lies of the enemy out of others. We cannot assume to have authority over the enemy in other people's lives if we have no authority over him in our own. You must cast the enemy out of your own camp before you go out and try to take territory. How can you expand the land, the territory, when you have not even taken what God has already given into your hand? We start first with our inner man, with the territory of our mind and our emotions, and we have to cast the enemy out of that. Now, it's not by our power, but it is by faith. It is by the name of Jesus Christ. But we have to speak that thing out as a demonstration of faith. We've got to call upon the name of the Lord. We've got to believe that he is able, that he is stronger than the enemy. If we don't really believe that he is God and that he is stronger than these little created beings, these entities that entice men to sin and bring temptations, then do we really believe? My king is greater than them. My Jesus came to set the captive free, to heal, to restore, to deliver, to do great and mighty things. And he is still willing to do these things through you and me if we believe. It's faith. Do you have the faith? You've got to have all faith that God can deliver you from every vice of the enemy. And once he has, and you are walking in that, then by all means, go out and set the captives free. And since we're talking about repentance here, then we need to acknowledge what real repentance really is because we've developed this mindset that it's just asking for forgiveness, but that is not scriptural repentance. In fact, God even said in the scriptures that you weary me with your constant tears on the altar asking for forgiveness, but you continue in your wickedness. The word repentance means to confess, to acknowledge that these things are sin, that we recognize that they are against the will of God, that he does not want us to do them and then choose to turn away from them, having enough faith to believe that he can empower us to overcome them. But he will not release the grace to overcome until we first have the faith to turn away from them. That's what repentance does. It's not our own strength because we know we can't do it in and of ourselves. But when we have faith that he can, then we are able to lay those things down. So the next thing I would say that if there is a vice in your life and you can't seem to get the victory over it, the next thing you might want to consider doing is fasting. And if you want to be used in deliverance ministry, then I assure you, you are required to live a fasted life. In fact, in Matthew chapter 17, starting in verse 18, the disciples had been approached by a father who needed demons cast out of his son. And they could not do it. So he brought the child to Jesus. And after Jesus had cast the demons out, the disciples came to him privately and said, why could we not cast them out? Because they had cast many demons out by this point. So they wanted to understand what what was the problem here? Why was it not working? We were not moving in the overcoming victory and power that we've seen over other things. What made this different? And Jesus replied to them this, because of your unbelief, For verily I say unto you that if ye have the faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Be removed to yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall by any means be impossible unto you. However, this kind goeth not out except but by prayer 
and fasting. The disciples had not been fasting. We know that by other scriptures that they didn't fast until after Christ had left them. So that Jesus said this kind, this battle, this overcoming victory only comes through prayer and fasting. We see that example laid out clearly by Daniel in that when the angel had to come to him to bring answers to his prayers, he was held up by a principality and Daniel had to fast for 21 days and pray. So we understand that principalities can only be dethroned by prayer and fasting. Principalities we can look at as demons over regions. We see that people can be possessed by these lesser unclean spirits, but so also can whole regions be oppressed by powers and principalities. And Jesus makes it very clear that to fight these larger battles, you must fast. So if you want to be used in deliverance ministry, then you will have to fast. But also, if you need breakthrough in your own personal life, then seek the Lord because a fast may be in store. If you are in need of deliverance, if there is an oppressive spirit, if there is depression, if there is suicide, if there is a perversion, if there are spirits lying to you, or if you are a child of God that is desiring to be used in deliverance ministry, or perhaps someone you care about is being oppressed by the enemy and you want to know how to cast these things out, then I want to give you this simple instruction. The first thing that a person needs to do to be delivered is to be willing to pray a prayer of repentance, audibly speak agreement with the word of God, to renounce any agreement with the enemy, sin, or occultism. And this can be a wide range because in our modern society, the occult is so entangled into everything that it gives the enemy access in a lot of ways that we would not expect. The person has to also forgive and lay aside all offenses because the Bible says that if we do not forgive others, God will not forgive us. We cannot even be saved. We cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit. We cannot be atoned for and we surely cannot be delivered if we are holding on to offenses. It is an open door to the enemy. In fact, the Bible says that if you choose to hold on to wrath or anger against anyone, you literally give place to the devil. This is what happened to Cain when God warned him, be careful. The enemy is standing at the door and knocking. He is waiting to get in because of envy. Cain had begun to hold offense against his brother and it caused him to give place to the enemy. Any person that is not willing to lay aside every bitterness and offense and forgive all men of every sin, they are not saved. They're not part of the kingdom and they have no authority against the enemy. So this is a critical point. We've got to realize this and deal with it in our own hearts. And we've got to help others to understand it before we go telling them that they've been set free when they're still bound by the enemy. And once a person has forgiven all that they have ought against, then they need to ask God to send his Holy Spirit to come in and indwell them. Because I tell you this, my friend, after doing this for many years, that it is a waste of time and energy. And in the end will be a great detriment to the person being delivered if the house or the temple or the body is left empty. If it is not filled with a stronger spirit, the Holy Spirit, then the unclean spirits will eventually just simply come right back in. And the latter end of the person will be worse than the former. Jesus tells us this in Matthew chapter 12, verse 43, when he said, when the unclean spirits are gone out of a man, they walk through dry places seeking rest and find none. Then the spirit will say, I will return unto my house from whence I am come out. And when he comes, he finds the house empty. This is the key word. When he comes back, he finds the house empty. Because if it had not been empty, he would not have been able to retake the territory. There has to be somebody there to possess the land. And in the case of our spiritual house or our temple or our body, the Holy Spirit has to indwell it because only that will protect it from being retaken by the enemy. 
this is the reason we have to get rid of offense because offense grieves the Holy Spirit and it will cause him to depart. It will leave our house empty so that the enemy can walk right back in. So will any other unrepented sin. We've got to understand this so we can walk in overcoming power because there is no reason for a person who claims to believe in the King of Kings and Lord of Lords to be overtaken by the enemy that's already been defeated by him. Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy. He is God in the flesh and his blood has atoned for us and made us joint heirs with him. Do we understand what that means? To be a joint heir with Christ means that we inherit everything that he did. We get his authority. We get his kingship. We get his name. We get his sonship. We become children of God and are set far above all of the powers and principalities and dominions of this world. I taught a very powerful lesson on this. I don't have time to bring you in depth into it, but I will put a link to it in the description of the video of this podcast if you want to go into greater understanding on why we have the spiritual authority that we've been given. But Jesus said that if these unclean spirits come back and they find the house empty, swept and garnished, He will then go back to it and take with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they will enter in and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. This is why it is detrimental and pointless to do deliverance on a person that is not ready for repentance. Yes, we have authority and we can force those spirits out of them. But if they're not willing to turn away from the sin or the bitterness that gave it access in the first place, then it's only coming back with seven more friends. And then the latter state of the man will be worse than the beginning. So the first thing that you need to do if you really want to move in deliverance is to learn how to lead someone to salvation through repentance. And always ask the person, are you serious? Because deliverance is for the desperate. And if they're not ready to give up their wickedness, their rebellion, their pride, their arrogance, their bitterness, their unforgiveness, if they're not willing to confess these things as sin, that they're guilty of them and that they need deliverance from them, then you're wasting your time and energy. Don't cast your pearls before swine. Shake the dust off. Move on down the line. Find someone who is willing to humble their heart before the Lord and keep praying for them. It's not hopeless for them. They're just not broken enough yet. Keep fasting, keep praying, but wait until they're ready for deliverance. We can pull all the weeds that we want out of a garden. If we're not planting the new seed, then the weeds are just going to come back and overtake it again. They need the Holy Spirit. So remember first to always ask them to acknowledge him, to acknowledge their sin, and to repent of it. So today I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And we're all going to pray this prayer. And if we don't need it, then we'll pray it anyway as a learning lesson in case God puts us in a position where we have to lead somebody else in it. But we're going to pray prayers of deliverance. And we're going to believe in the name of Jesus Christ that he came to take away our sin, to wash us in his blood and to cause us to walk in his overcoming, victorious power, the authority of the name of Jesus. We take on his name. We take on his authority. It is not by our own strength or might. It's not anything that I am doing, but that I have faith in the name of my King and the power of the Holy Spirit to move through me, to walk in the authority that he has afforded me by his precious atoning blood. So I'm going to pray this prayer and I need you to repeat after me, but let it not be vain repetition. You need to truly mean it. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you are the son of God, that you came and you died and you rose again on the third day to take away my sin that your blood atones for me and allows me to receive your Holy Spirit. I thank you for it. 
I praise you for it. And I ask you for it today. I acknowledge my sins before you. And if there be anything that you know is a sin, you need to speak that forth and confess it to him. This is our humbling where we say, God, I acknowledge that these things that I have done, they were my fault. They were sin. I committed them and they were wrong. They are against your will. And I'm sorry for it. I repent of it. I commit to turn away from it and continue no more therein, having full faith that your grace can keep me from it and overcome it in Jesus' name. God, come into my heart. I give you my life. Use me for your glory. And now we need to renounce any allegiance with the enemy, any ties to the occult or anything satanic. We need to acknowledge it as sin, repent of it, and break allegiance with it because this creates a stronghold, a legal access point for the enemy. And so, God, we renounce any agreement with sin, with rebellion, or with the occult or the satanic in the name of Jesus. We break agreement with it. And God, we commit to clean out our house that as we cry out to you to cast the enemy out, we will throw his stuff out with him so that he can't come back in to get it. So you need to cleanse your physical house as God cleanses your spiritual house. You need to ask him to show you the things that give the enemy access. And if there is any form of occultism or witchcraft, in anything in your life, you need to commit to get rid of it. That could be in the form of video games, in movies, in books, in home decor, anything that is not glorifying to the Lord, but incorporates the satanic or the occultish. Even music, a lot of these things have the occult entwined into it by intent to give the enemy access to your home and your family. You need to commit to get rid of it. Lord, we repent of it. We repent of participating in these ungodly things. They do not bring you glory. And we do not want part of them. And now, God, we forgive all of those. Their debts and their trespasses against us. So that you can forgive us, God. We choose by our will to lay down every offense, to tear up the IOUs. It doesn't matter what the devil tries to tell me I'm entitled to. Today, I choose you. I choose life. I choose the power of my Christ. But before I can grab hold of you and walk in newness of life, I've got to be willing to lay down the pride that tells me I can hold on to offense because I cannot you your spirit will have nothing to do with it so today God we repent of offense of bitterness we lay it all down in the name of Jesus if there's anyone that you know that you hold offense against then you need to repent of that right now and lay it down it may not be a person in particular it could be a group of persons it could be a race or an ethnicity. It could be a religious group or organization. It could be a political affiliation. Anything that you have offense, bitterness, or unforgiveness against, you must repent of it to be saved. And if not, then you are an open sepulcher to the enemy. You cannot stop him from overtaking you. That's not my opinion. That's the words of Jesus Christ himself, God in the flesh. If we do not believe it, then we do not believe him and we forfeit eternity because of it. And now, God, that we have 
chosen to forgive and received your forgiveness. We stand in faith on it. We give you praise for it. We thank you that your word says that whom the son sets free is free indeed and that anyone who shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. They will be delivered, that you are faithful, that all we have to do is believe in our heart and confess with our mouth and you will step in and take the enemy out. So God, we cry out to you right now. We call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Just cry out, Jesus, free me. Jesus, Jesus cleanse me. Jesus save me. Jesus cast out every spirit that is not the Holy Spirit of the living God and then infill me with your spirit. God, take my vessel and use it for your glory. I want to follow your leading daily. And then as you pray that prayer, I want you to release. Just breathe out Relax. Whatever you feel needs to be done to just release. Don't continue praying. I'm going to pray over you. I'm going to call some things out. But I want you to just focus on letting it go right now. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over every unclean spirit that has come against the children of the living God that are listening to me now. It is not by power nor by might, but by the spirit of the Lord. So I send forth the sword of the Lord right now that in the name of Jesus, every unclean spirit must come out now in Jesus name. Every spirit of death be cast out every spirit of homicide every spirit of hatred every spirit of bitterness and unforgiveness every spirit of murder every spirit of guilt and abortion every spirit of oppression and depression turn them loose now in the name of Jesus every spirit of fear and confusion every spirit of false witness and lie and slander in the name of Jesus every spirit of vainglory and pride and pomp and arrogance every spirit of malice and contention every spirit of envy and jealousy every spirit of perversion in the name of Jesus come out of them now every spirit of homosexuality every spirit of pornography, every spirit of molestation in every manifestation. I command you to come out of them in the name of Jesus and be cast into the depths of the sea. Every spirit that lies and brings confusion into the mind of the people, I command you to turn them loose now in the name of Jesus and come out. Every spirit of witchcraft, and control and manipulation. You turn them loose in the name of Jesus. Every religious spirit, every spirit of error, I command you to turn them loose. Oh, Holy Spirit of the living God, come. We are crying out to the name of Jesus Christ. Come and fight this fight in the power of your might. Let the sword of the spirit of the living God go forth and cut down every work of the enemy, every power and principality, every demon and unclean spirit. I command every spirit of infirmity under the sound of my voice to turn them loose, that they would be healed from this point forward. Every person who believes that they are ill when they are not because a spirit has lied to them. I break curses that have been spoken generationally in the name of Jesus. I break the claim that the enemy has on those whose family members have taken an oath through occultic means by the Masons or any other organization that ties people generationally to oaths. Let it be broken now in the name of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus lays claim and has all right. And we are claiming it by faith today that every person under the sound of my voice is set free. I command every demon to flee now in the name of Jesus, our King, the King, the greatest authority. And we give him praise for it. God, we thank you. We love you. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you for the release that we're feeling. And we're going to worship you because you are worthy. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that assures us and moves through us and empowers us with your grace. We thank you, Jesus, that you made a way of escape. We thank you that because your spirit is upon us, 
We can also move in the ministry of reconciliation that you desire us to, that you use us, that you cleanse us, and that you send us forth to expand the territory that you've given us. We thank you for it, Lord, today. And we thank you for the provision that your blood has made to set the captive free. All glory be to King Jesus.